on the enforcement of fundamental human rights suits filed by the Peace Corps of Nigeria. EFCC seeks the retransfer of trial of ex Imo State Governor Ikedi Ohakim back to Justice Ademola. Trial within trial of five Boko Haram suspects begin in Abuja. Hello and welcome to Judiciary Watch. I am Augusta Yaku. We have a handful of judiciary news packages for you as well as a very insightful discourse. If you've not put your witnesses together, then don't take anybody to court. Don't, don't even make the attempt of arresting anybody. But you don't go ahead, make an arrest, and then you make an application for remand on the basis of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, and then you keep the person in prison for up to about 54 days. Please don't go away. We'll be right back in just a moment. Keep watching Judiciary Watch for deep knowledge of the law. Issues wondering on our collective and individual fundamental rights for knowing the correct perspective of the law issues of governance you just watch judiciary watch because there's no program that is like it of lawyers led by one barrister John Mary Jideobi have filed a suit challenging the legality of Ibrahim Mago as chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC. The suit which has as respondents the Senate of Nigeria, the Attorney General of the Federation, the EFCC and Ibrahim Mago was on Thursday received by Justice B. O. Kadri of the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja. According to the plaintiff, so many things have been going wrong in the country and no one has taken responsibility of correcting such anomalies. He decried the rate of non-adherence to the rule of law in Nigeria, particularly with the recent rift that engulfed the legislature and the executive over the continuous illegal functioning of Ibrahim Magu as EFCC chairman. Both counsel to the Nigerian Senate and that of the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation have expressed readiness to be part of the matter. Justice Quadri adjourned to the 10th of October 2017 for continuous hearing on the matter with Ibrahim Magu and a representative of the EFCC present. Emmanuel Bagudu, PTV News. A 27-year-old man, Mubarak Saidu, has been arraigned in Gudu Upper Area Court, Abuja, for allegedly protesting the detention of Ibrahim El Zakzaki. Saidu, who is of Kano state origin, was arraigned on a two-count charge of criminal conspiracy and inciting disturbance. The prosecutor, Daniel Apochi, who told the court that the defendant was arrested on June 23, 2017, after an information alert to the Deputy Commissioner of Police. 
Abuja said that the defendant, with one other now at large, gathered to hold illegal process at the mosque of the Federal Capital Development Authority against the continual detention of the Shi'it Muslim cleric Ibrahim El Zakzaki. According to Apochi, they had inscriptions with Free Palestine and Free El Zakzaki, adding that the intention was to cause or disturb public peace. Apochi said that during police investigation, the defendant confessed to the offense and that the offenses were contrary to section 97 and section 114 of the penal code. Sayidu pleaded not guilty and the trial judge, Umar Kagarku, admitted him to bail in the sum of 100,000 naira with one shorty in the like sum while the case was adjourned until August 3, 2017 for hearing. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has written a letter to the Federal High Court headquarters in Abuja seeking the retransfer of the trial of the ex-governor of Imo State, Ikedi Ohakim, back to Justice Adeni Ademola. It could be recalled that Justice Adeni Ademola has been trying Ohakim on corruption charges since 2015, but had to hand over the trial to Justice B. O. Kadri after his arrest by the Department of State Services. Counsel to Ohakim, Awakalu, presented the retransfer letter signed by EFCC lawyer Festus Kayamo on Thursday to Justice B. O. Kadri, who adjourned the matter to 5th October 2017 for ruling on the retransfer request. If you're just joining us, this is Judiciary Watch, where we update you on the recent happenings in the Nigerian justice system. Please don't go away. Welcome back. Justice Gabriel Kolawole of the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has fixed July 6, 2017 to deliver ruling of an application seeking the enforcement of the fundamental human right of the Commandant of the Peace Corps of Nigeria, Dixon Akko, and his subordinates. Akko has asked the court to enforce his fundamental human right after alleging that the Nigerian police and the DSS arrested and molested him on grounds of operating an illegal organization. Respondents to the application for the enforcement of fundamental human rights brought by Peace Corps of Nigeria are the Nigerian Police, the Department of State Services and the National Security Advisor. Vehemently opposing the application, all the respondents agree that the Peace Corps of Nigeria is a legal entity but has been found wanting in areas of crime and is not immune to investigations and arrests. The judge in response reminded the respondents that it is not in their powers to determine the legality of Peace Corps of Nigeria. He then gave the chance to the Peace Corps of Nigeria through its counsel, John Ochogu, to respond on point of law. In his point of law, Ochogu referred the court to section 167 of the Evidence Act which requires proof of evidence and he argued that apart from the fact that the respondents have not proven to the Honorable Court that the Peace Corps of Nigeria is engaged in criminal activities, there is no court of law that have proven them guilty of any crime.
After taking arguments from both councils, Justice Kola Wale reserves 6th of July 2017 for ruling on the application. Emmanuel Bagudu, PTV News. The Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has on Wednesday begun the trial of five suspected Boko Haram members. First defendant Yakubu Abdullahi, who acted as his own witness, narrated the circumstances that led to the arrest and subsequent detention by the DSS. Trial judge Gabriel Kolawole asked that the suspect be remanded in the Kujay prison and returned July 4, 2017 for the continuation of the trial within trial. It is now time for our Judiciary Watch Discuss. That, and particularly section 36 of section 5, that there is a presumption of innocence. And then you can't just keep somebody in prison awaiting you going to, to get uh, what we call pieces of evidence in order to convict him. So that provision, particularly uh, section 100 and section 101 and section 102 of the administration. Please don't go away. We'll be right back in just a moment. Keep watching Judiciary Watch for deep knowledge of the law. Issues wondering on our collective and individual fundamental rights. For knowing the correct perspective of the law. Issues of governance. You just watch Judiciary Watch. Because there's no program that is like this. of Frank Tete of Fort Wright Chambers where we will be discussing the Administration of Criminal Justice Act. So I'm honored to have you on this episode of Judiciary Watch, sir. You're most welcome. Thank you. On to our first question. What, ad what, what is the scope of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act? The Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015 was actually enacted as the Criminal Procedure Act to replace the Criminal Procedure Act and then uh, in uh, particularly Criminal Procedure Code with regards to federal offenses. So we're dealing with uh, courts that apply federal laws and that particularly federal high courts and then courts within the FCT when they are dealing particularly with criminal matters. So in terms of procedure, the criminal, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act was meant to replace the, the criminal procedure laws as they were in Nigeria at that time. Since the enactment of the, uh, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, uh, what have been the upsides to this? First and foremost, I, I think the act was, uh, was uh, made, was enacted in order to, um, you know, hasten the administration of criminal justice because we had our courts were clogged with uh, uh, criminal cases that were taking years unresolved. So the, the speedy administration, the speedy dispensation of criminal justice was actually the aim of uh, the enactment of uh, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act. And inter in interestingly, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act does not tolerate um, unusual and indiscriminate and unjustifiable adjournment, for example. Now, cases have to be dispensed with within a short time, and, and as such, cases shouldn't be adjourned uh, necessarily longer than two weeks, for example. So, it has a, a, the, the benefits of, uh, you know, trying to, you know, 
make our courts to a court system particularly the the administration of criminal justice to be freer and it indeed has done so but it has also made some innovations for example you know the, the, a lot of cases uh, uh, drag on in court criminal cases drag on in court because of the existence of uh, you know trying to prove uh, things that need not be proved need not take such long time for example the use of trial within trial to verify the 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 you know the admissibility of certain statements whether they were made voluntarily or not now the administration of criminal justice act particularly in section 15 subsection 4 you know provides that wherever suspects are making statements that would be tendered in court when they volunteer to make confessional statements those statements should be made in front of the camera and those um, and then they be, those, those statements be recorded in, in video and they put in compact discs i think it specifies compact discs and then such statements even though they are written by the suspect or by the policeman who interrogated the suspect will be tendered along with the video evidence that, that's that's a fine innovation but we do have problems with the administration of criminal justice acts especially by uh, wrongly you know wrongly making uh, you know remand as a form of uh, uh, part of our criminal justice system it's unknown to our constitution our constitution provides clearly in section 36 that and particularly in section 36 of section 5 that there is a presumption of innocence and then you can't just keep somebody in prison awaiting you going to get uh, what we call pieces of evidence in order to convict him so that provision particularly uh, section 100 and section 101 and section 102 or the administration of criminal justice act that seems to you know justify remand it, it's a tragedy as far as we are concerned if you're not prepared to take anybody to court I and mean, we're talking to talking this time around to the prosecutor if you've not put your cases together if you not put your evidence together if you've not put your witnesses together then don't take anybody to court don't don't even make the attempt of arresting anybody but you don't go ahead make an arrest and then you make an application for remand on the basis of the administration of criminal justice act and then you keep the person in prison for up to about 54 days legitimately contradicts the provision of the constitution and i think that should be outrightly jettisoned by way of amendment my next question would have been the the merits of the enactment of this act but you already furnished me with the answer so uh, uh next is uh the last but not the least question what, what, what would be your recommendation if the need to review the act arises? The, the provisions on bail, and I'm talking about between section 180, 181 and 183, should be adequately reviewed. You know, bail has been abused by the law enforcement authorities, particularly the police and the EFCC and even the courts. Bail is a constitutional right and the, 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 we are looking forward to having an administration of criminal justice act that will liberalize bail conditions. Bail should be automatic whenever anybody is accused of any criminal offense, he is presumed guilty. I mean, he's presumed innocent, and on that basis, he should be assured that his liberty will, he would have his liberty whenever he's arrested. So long, so we don't, we, we are not looking at onerous conditions for bail, you know. So I, I think that the most important area to be amended, to be looked into, to be liberalized in order to give effect to the constitutional provision on bail is section 180 181 and 183 of the administration of criminal justice act in order to liberalize bail in order to make bail more accessible in fact we're talking about a situation where bail most times for, for for a taxpayer bail should be automatic on the basis that he is known for someone who has a bvn for example he's entitled to bail on the basis of self-recognition so we are looking at a situation where bail conditions in our country will be much more liberalized taken away from the district discretion of the policeman the discretion of any person who has the power to make arrest that's what we're thinking well thank you very much sir for this uh, educative interaction once again it's an honor to have you on this segment of judiciary watch you're most welcome thank you keep watching judiciary Watch for deep knowledge of the law. Issues bordering on our collective and individual fundamental rights. For knowing the correct perspective of the law. Issues of governance. You just watch Judiciary Watch. Because there's no program 
that is like it. on today's episode of Judiciary Watch. Hope you had an insightful moment listening. Keep a date with us on your preferred people's network, PTV. I remain my humble self, Augusta Yaku. Stay law abiding. Keep watching Judiciary Watch for deep knowledge of the law issues bordering on our collective and individual fundamental rights for knowing the correct perspective of the law issues of governance you just watch judiciary watch because there's no program that is like it